हरे कृष्णा कंतारा मूवी अ भगवद गीता परस्पेक्टिव फ्यू थिंग्स शेप द माइंड एंड द वर्ल्ड व्यू ऑफ पीपल टुडे एज मच एज मूवीज एंड वी सी इन द इंडियन मूवी इंडस्ट्री मोर एंड मोर एंडेवर टू रेप्लीकेट traditional indic world views drawn from the vedic scriptures so bahubali had many vedic motifs in it the theme of shivalinga and many parallels with the mahabharat and kantara goes further and it doesn't just draw some themes or motifs or images it actually depicts an a world view that is not so familiar to the modern mind and that is a, a very different from the world view that are typically depicted in movies in one sense the entertainment industry is quite open to world views beyond the gross materialistic world views where we have star wars and there is a mystical force and there are people with special abilities and there are all kinds of domains but the vedic world view with its own sophisticated way of looking at the world is something which has not been depicted and uh, because of that often rational or contemporary people think that this is just pre rational sentimental superstitious kind of thing but one of the the movie begins with the idea that the land which a king has it actually is not belong to the king it belongs to the belongs to the lord and it is given by the king to the lord in a mood of service and then it is entrusted to people who are devoted to that form of the lord in this case it is the varaha rupa so the idea that as the bhagavad the ishopanishad says isha vasya minam sarvam that everything belongs to the divine the bhagavad gita says that sarva loka maheshwaram as the ultimate proprietor of everything is the divine that theme is depicted right in the beginning and this was not unfamiliar to the pre scientific revolution world view but especially post scientific revolution and in the indus post industrialization the idea became that nature exists just for our picking if we just gain the power then we will control nature subordinate nature exploit nature for our own purposes and that's why when countries go to antarctica or they go into outer space they plant their own flags this country this part belongs to us however we are hassles recognizing that we need to live more in harmony with nature as we are in encountering the prospects of severe environmental problems in the future so that world view where nature is sacred that is very vivid that is the underlying theme and then whom does whom does the forest belong to whom does the area belong to does it belong to the government Uh, the government may seem to have benevolent intentions to preserve the flora and fauna the wildlife over there uh, the or does it belong to some politicians who are in cahoots with some business people and they want to exploit it for their own purposes does it belong to the tribals who actually have been caring for it although not exactly in the way in which the government envisions caring should be done so that is the underlying tension and the theme is that this land is sacred because it has been entrusted by the sacred supreme lord uh, to uh, it was belongs to the lord and it's entrusted to their care then beyond that there is also the theme of how the the varaha rupa is described and again the in some religious traditions there is a big distance between humanity and divinity that it is impenetrable barrier god's complete otherness is talked about so much so that we cannot even describe god because he is so different from us and our world of experience whereas within the vedic tradition the boundary between existence and god is often quite porous and god's inclusiveness god's connection with nature is so so multifaceted that not only is nature sacred but this transcendental sacred supremely sacred being appears in nature as avatars and in many different forms 
not just in human like forms but even in forms from nature like we have the matsya avatar we have the varaha avatar and the kurma avatar the lord as a boar the lord as a fish the lord as a to- uh, tortoise so all these are described and they describe how the div- divinity is not restricted to humanity and human imagination or human conceptions the scope of divinity extends and embraces all of existence and then there is the depiction of avesh that avatar is the divine the descent of the divine intermittently throughout history sambhavami yuge yuge but avesh is where a, a, f- a fraction of the divine or a empowerment of the divine comes into this world through some human agents and at those time those human agents become completely transformed they g- gain access to a power that is beyond ordinary human power and again that is depicted here the main protagonist is called shiva he comes on a bull like nandi and his his forest cottage is called kailash so that motif is also there and then he especially towards the end he seems to gain some divine power and with that divine power he disrupts all attempts to try to stop the the captivation or uh, the subordination the exploitation of the forest by scheming people so the idea of avesh of divine the divine manifesting through the human is also vividly depicted and while there is of course the beautiful prayer about varaha dev that is there which again musics glorifying the divine set in a contemporary contemporarily attractive uh, setting of a movie that has far greater resonance and reach than similar glorification that is done in uh, maybe has been done for million by millions of people for millennia in temples and other traditional settings so it is encouraging to see that overall more and more not just themes and names from traditional indian indian wisdom are being adopted are being adopted and depicted in movies but now entire world views are being depicted and that is all being done in a way that is entertaining and appealing so that even those who are otherwise not interested in in the divine in krishna in bhakti or in anything spiritual some level of spirituality can be uh, can be infused in their consciousness and some spiritual interest can be triggered so the raising of human consciousness can happen at different levels for those whose consciousness is already elevated enough to be absorbed in the divine directly for them such contemporary means of entertaining presentations of the divine and the divine centered world you may not be necessary but for most of humanity such are the mediums by which the divine stays in the popular mind and slowly starts carving out a space there the divine has to gain entrance 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 into the human mind before the divine can entrance the human mind we can pray that that entrancing of the human mind can also happen more and more through the sharing of the spiritual wisdom centered on divine love thank you hare krishna